When it comes to defending America, it is not enough to merely have an American presence in space. We must have American dominance in space. So important. Very importantly, I'm here by directing the Department of Defense and Pentagon to immediately begin the process necessary to establish a Space Force as the sixth branch of the armed forces. That's a big statement. I am instructing my administration to embrace the budding commercial space industry. We are modernizing out-of-date space regulations. They're way out of date. They haven't been changed in many, many years. And today, we're taking one more step to unleash the power of American ingenuity. In a few moments, I will sign a new directive to federal departments and agencies. They will work together with American industry to implement a state-of-the-art framework for space traffic management. There is a group that has malice aforethought and has planned to launch these assets in a way that would look like 100% like an attack on our planet or on human assets, calling it alien when it's being run by people. This is the, I call it the Wizard of Oz effect, but it's very sophisticated and we should not underestimate their capacity. Back some years ago, um, I hosted at, in Washington, prior to the uh, National Press Club event uh, in 2001, a private briefing for Congress that was at the Weston Hotel in Georgetown. And there were a number of people there and chairman of committees, and uh, Edgar Mitchell was there as my guest, who he's passed on now. And uh, one of the gentlemen who was there was a man who was, uh, had been on an interagency committee in 1974. Now, this is 42 years ago. And the testimony he was going to provide to those members of Congress and other people, there was a science advisor for Vice President Al Gore there, all kinds of folks, uh, was that we had this capability I'm telling you about today in November of 2016 and that all they would have to do is push a button, boom, and the entire event would roll out. And he said everyone on planet Earth would be fooled. And now we have an Air Force Office of Special Investigations counterintelligence officer confirming the false flag operations, but he would not discuss, he says, that's still very secret, that's very secret, I can't talk about that. We have it on camera jumping out of his skin because I asked the question in a way that he understood. Do you know about the deceptive INWs and the false INWs? No one else running the cameras knew what that term meant. He did. And when you have a black operation that is so secretive, that they could pull off a stunt like this. It means they could stampede the entire world into an Independence Day, like the movie event. Has this already been beta tested? Yes. So they beta tested and have been testing on the public sightings that are man-made UFOs, often piggybacking on sightings of actual ET craft so that people are confused don't have any discernment. But, um, special operations folks who are under five feet and with certain makeup and masks on these anti-gravities who would go then and abduct people. So there have been abduction squads, which are also confirmed by this Air Force intelligence officer, that have been operative for decades. And when it has suited the intelligence community, they have engaged in human abductions that 100% fool those poor victims. Um, and because of what has been happening with the WikiLeaks, 
with John Podesta's emails about UFOs, the New York Times reporting on Hillary's interest in it, which this was a red line subject, the mainstream media starting to report it, they are being unleashed. To me, there are signs out there that this false flag hoaxing of an attack on the planet is close, closer than it's been in 22 years that I've been involved. The gentleman who had this story to tell and who was an official on the interagency committee dealing with this specifically, who was going to testify in front of these members of Congress at, at that private meeting I set up in 1997, he told me that this was the most difficult thing he'd ever done because he felt like he was betraying some of his brothers in the intelligence community, but he felt the world needed to know. That night, he was sequestered out of the Westin Hotel by people who he had worked with back in the 70s and taken to an undisclosed location out in Virginia, and he never returned, and we've never heard from him since. Well, for decades, only crackpots and crazy people believed in UFOs. That's what I thought anyway. And then in recent years, it turns out that governments had been taking them seriously all along, very seriously. Nick Pope is a journalist who has spent years researching UFOs for the British government. He says that UFOs aren't just real. They also frequently come close to crashing into commercial airliners, among other things. Nick Pope joins us tonight. Nick, thank you very much for coming on. Um, so it's really not a question of do governments believe USOs, UFOs are real? Yes, they do. The United States government does. The British government does. The question is, do they have any idea what they are, where they're from? No, we don't. We keep an open mind on it. We don't rule anything uh, off, you know, take nothing off the table with this. Our point really is that whatever these things turn out to be, there is a serious defense, national security and air safety issue here. Yes. Well, so that's and, kind of the nub we, of it, and that is the, that, that's where my interest comes from. So why aren't governments encouraging the population to, as they say about terrorism, if you see something, say something, report sightings to the government so we can make sense of this potential threat? Well, they should be, and that's what we certainly did at the Ministry of Defense for many years. We took it very seriously. Our own pilots were seeing these things. We were having radar operators track them. And we knew, again, through intelligence and through open source material, we knew that the Russians and the Chinese and others were working on this too. The problem was that just the pop culture baggage from the term UFO, flying saucer, little green men, people right. don't take it seriously but they should. So we've ruled out, I think, that these are aircraft, experimental aircraft, or technically advanced aircraft from other countries. Is that true? Well, no, we keep an open mind, as I say, and, and some of these things probably are uh, Russian or Chinese, whoever it is, but th that's the point. We must find out if there's something in our airspace we need to know. Uh, for years, governments said they didn't do this. They did. I did it for the British government. I can only talk about this now because my old employers are gradually declassifying and releasing information about my old job. We now know, of course, the Pentagon had a program too. I think it will take congressional hearings to get to the bottom of all this, not just in, in uh, the United States, but all around the world. And I, I'd like to see those congressional hearings. C uh, commercial pilots have very often reported sighting objects in the air that seem to defy the laws of physics. To what extent are these objects a threat to commercial aviation, potentially? Well, certainly the British Ministry of Defense and our Civil Aviation Authority, which is the UK equivalent of your FAA, have dozens of cases in our files about near misses, some of which where pilots have had to take evasive action. And again, it comes back to the point, I don't care in one sense what these things are, but when there is this flight safety concern, when we have these near misses, we right. sure as heck should be doing more to find out. You know, one of the ones that we're tracking out in our solar system is 26 miles across. One ET vehicle, 26, it's the size of the LA basin. Anyway, so um, 
believe me, if they were hostile, it would have been all over the time we, uh, believe me, before the monkeys started developing thousands of nuclear weapons. It would have been point, set, match, over. You know, forget about the invasion stuff.